Kia ora, welcome to this COVID-19 live panel discussion. My name's Hannah Martin, I'm a health reporter here at Stuff. And this morning I'm joined by GP Dr. Hina Lutui, paediatrician Dr. Greg Williams, and immunologist Dr. Anthony Jordan. Uh, today we are taking uh, reader questions on all things to do with COVID at Christmas. Uh, we'll dive right in. Uh, with Christmas just around the corner and cases and hospitalizations starting to trend up again, uh, what can we expect in the next couple of weeks or couple of months? Yes, yeah, so you're right, cases are up and what we hope to see, and this is our Christmas wish as a healthcare system, I think as everyone else is, that we'd like to see those cases plateau and come down before we get into the holiday break. Different to what we saw early on in the year where they sort of rose really sharply and came down sharply, this is more of that sort of gradual week on week cases and so that's sort of more of a smooth bump rise in cases, which doesn't mean that the number of people affected by it aren't going to be the same as early on. It just hasn't seen that sharp mm. peak. Okay. Uh, and is that something that we're expecting to see? When, when you mention a plateau, do you have an indication from the modelling as to when that might take place? It's a bit hard, and you'll remember when we were here last time, we were sort of talking about cases being low for another two to three months and then gradually expecting cases to rise. One of the things that I think we're starting to see more of now is reinfection. So it's how much more those new variants are able to reinfect people from the last wave of COVID or even if you've got COVID between the two peaks. So we want it to be smooth and low and we definitely want the peak to start coming down now, but we just need to sort of wait and see, to be honest. Uh, and so perhaps one for the floor. So Christmas is, is just around the corner now uh, and it's a, you know, a really important period of time for people. Families are getting together, whānau, friends are meeting up and socialising, there's lots of mixing going on. Uh, what is your advice for how people can do so safely uh, in the next couple of weeks, Christmas Day? Should people be rat testing before meeting up with particular vulnerable family members? What would your advice be for, for the... Well, I've been thinking about this personally because somehow I managed to invite my entire extended whānau to my house for um, a week, not just Christmas Day. So um, that raises all the practical questions you just mentioned. Um, do I insist that all my whānau rat test before they come? Um, I might do, actually. Uh, like it's just reasonable they're travelling from afar. Um, at the very least, have a really good... Uh, understanding of, um, of who's got symptoms and encourage them to get rat testing. We know that the rat tests perform really well if people have symptoms that might be due to COVID. And so, um, well, first of all, if you're really sick, don't travel. Uh, secondly, if you get sick while you're away, think about what that might mean, have a plan for it, um, and having a supply of rats available when it might be over that period of time where it's a bit harder to get a hold of them. Um, that's a really good idea. But like balancing against that, it's just so crucial for people's well-being to get together. Mm -hmm. And so like I think everybody's doing, and I've been out to concerts recently, um, people really want to get together and uh, you know, go for it, mm -hmm. but do it safely. Yeah, totally else? agree. Um, I'm just thinking about I'm going to be going to church because that's what I do in my family um, and I'm going to be having a talk with mum to say you know maybe we should be wearing a mask because she's a little bit older um, and so some of the suggestions would be if you are going to places where you might have a lot of people together if you've got symptoms definitely stay at home you know you don't want to be spreading anything it might not be COVID it could be something else you don't want people getting sick so it's just good habits to have all the time to be honest um, but if you are going to be in events where it's indoors maybe a lot of people you might think about whether or not you want to wear a mask as well while you're indoors. Um, try and see if you can have events that are more outdoors, lots of air, um, you know, lots of space between you. But I know that you know a lot of our family want to come together. A lot of us will be going to attending functions which are indoors. So just be a bit practical about it, thinking about you know what is my risk level here? Who are those people I'm going to be engaging with? Um, is it somewhere I should be wearing masks? If I'm a little bit sicky, stay home. You don't want to spread anything. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and I guess then a, a similar question, uh, tis the season for work, Christmas parties, uh, does, the, does similar advice stand? What, is there anything that individuals or companies could be doing to mitigate their risk uh, in what may be more indoor settings? I think Hina's just picked up on some really good basic advice. Think about having it outdoors, think about ventilation, think about how you can utilise masking. 
and just reminding people if you're sick, regardless of if you're tested and it's negative for COVID, there are a lot of other viruses circulating. We're hearing that, you know, it's like, oh, I've been sick, I, you know, I must have COVID. It's like, well, you can have a lot of other viruses mm -hmm. and we don't want to spread those either. So, yeah, just really basic stuff. Think about the place that you're having it, making sure everyone knows not to come if they're sick. And just, you know, if you can't, you know, in close proximity, you know, talk about concerts and things like that, thinking about masking is really important as well. Sure. Uh, okay, so Greg has mentioned this already. This is a time of year where people really travel and travel all around the country um, to some parts of the country where perhaps the hospitals are, are you know smaller or or fairly stretched uh, what would be your advice for people traveling in terms of having a plan what does that plan entail what does a good COVID Christmas holiday plan actually look like and include one for the group yeah I think it's just that it's knowing that you should have a plan um, so know where you're going Health Point is a really useful website. It's got resources for if I was to get COVID, where could I get some rats if I'd run out of rats? Where could I get some masks? It gives advice about how to get home as well. We don't want people on planes with COVID, but if you travel by a car, saying yes, you can travel back to your residence if that's part of your plan, or as part of your plan saying if we had to isolate, here's how we would do it where we're going, for example. And then on top of that, there will be people who are thinking about, I know I'm eligible for antivirals, how would I access antivirals where I'm going to, whether it be through a pharmacist, knowing those opening hours or other networks that they could obtain their antivirals, advanced prescriptions, and they would have had conversations already, these people that know they're at risk with their GP about what's the best advice for me. I'm going to say also, you know, best protection is still your vaccination and to put a hit out there to get your booster. Um, you know, I've seen in the community now where people who haven't been fully vaccinated or partially vaccinated or in some cases no vaccination, really struggling when they've actually had COVID. Um, we, you know, we're lucky we've got antivirals, but if you could get protected beforehand, you could stop yourself getting so sick. And I was just saying to the team earlier, I've just had COVID a couple of weeks ago, I had hardly nothing. And that's because I had my second booster literally five weeks beforehand. So you need to have those boosters before you actually need them so that your mm. body is able to fight off that infection for you. And I'm telling you, it was a breeze. I didn't have hardly any symptoms. And I was like, oh, I just get to work from home at the moment. But some of the patients I have looked after have really struggled. Mm. Uh, you know, the body aches, the fatigue, um, the coughing, the shortness of breath, not a fun time. And, and we're just, yeah, so lucky we have got antivirals. Um, if you can't access your GP because we're closed, you know, um, try the local pharmacy. If you get really stuck, ring the 0800 COVID number. That's 0800 11 12 13. So it's nice and easy to remember. Um, and they can give you some advice to where to go to. Awesome. Uh, so one question we received was whether people should consider masking up on flights again, uh, both adults and children. I, I'm uh, yeah, interested to get your thoughts on what people should be doing in that particular setting. There's a couple of things um, I'd recommend for people. First of all, do what works for you. Um, we know masking is still a really effective way to reduce the chance of contracting and passing on COVID if you don't know you have it. Um, and there's other basic things that are really helpful as well, just simple hand washing. Um, you know, it doesn't cost anything, um, helps not just with COVID, but all sorts of other viruses that are circulating. Sucks to get sick when, when you're on holiday, so um, reducing the chance of that is pretty appealing. If, um, if individuals uh, want to have that extra sense of security about travelling through busy areas, through airports and so on, we're in close contact with a large number of people, then um, wearing a mask is fine. And I think compared to pre-COVID, there's way more social acceptance of that. Um, and, and you see it. Like at, at, at group events, often there's some people wearing masks and I think, well, good on you. You're doing the right thing for you. Yeah, yeah totally I, agree. I, I yeah, totally sorry. agree. Um, and having just, you know, been travelling and been on a plane, I wore a mask the whole time. And the thing I would say is, it's not just about the plane, it's the queuing. Like, it was the thing that I realised is behaviour is one of those weird things is we're spaced out on a plane, it's got good air circulation, it's got HEPA filtration, you know, you do 
think about surfaces that you're touching more. But then as soon as we get to customs or we're lining up, we all sort of <laughs> pile in together and like, we're all close. And so I think those are the things that I realise sometimes it's not just about being on the flight. Mm-hmm. It's all about that time before. Um, so that's when I guess I make sure I'm wearing my mask. And I do it partly because I'm protecting myself, but also to show other people that I want, you know, God forbid I had COVID, that I'm trying to protect them as well. I totally agree. And I'm just thinking of like, you know, my job as a GP, I've got sick people coming in all the time. We're all wearing masks at work. We ask our patients definitely if they've got symptoms to wear masks. None of us have caught COVID from being at work off yeah. each other. And we haven't caught it off our patients who have actually accidentally turned off positive because we've been wearing masks and using appropriate PPE. And that's an enclosed small spaces. So, you know, places when you're traveling, whether it be the bus, the plane, you know, think about those things and go, well, actually, you're less likely to get sick, less likely to spread things if you are actually wearing a mask. Okay. Uh, Henny, you mentioned before uh, antivirals and uh, kind of how people can get these. I did want to ask, um, or clarify rather, a bit about eligibility. So over this period, I mean, who can access antivirals? Will they, as Anthony mentioned earlier, know already that this is something that is uh, potentially available to them and and where over the summer months if GP clinics are are shutting down is kind of the best place for them to find them? Yeah, I mean the eligibility criteria has changed and a lot of that had to do with um, stock supply to be honest Um, and then who would be most at risk of getting really sick and unwell and so we had to prioritise those people first and that's why we had that criteria Um, and as we've watched the data and seeing which people are getting more and more sick and ending up in hospital then we've actually changed the criteria to include those people as well. Um, A lot of people who've got chronic conditions, they will know that they are actually eligible. Um, A lot of times the GPs have already reached out to some of them. Um, If you're on multiple medications, that often is a hint that you are eligible um, for for the um, antiviral. I think just have a chat with with the pharmacist if the GPs close. And again, you know, having a look at the 0800 COVID line, because they can definitely give you some advice. Even the health line can give you advice whether or not you're eligible or not. Yeah. Awesome. And they'd be good places to check too over the over the Christmas period, just as to what's open and when. Yep, definitely. And as Anthony mentioned before, Health Point has all the opening hours and contact numbers. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, so speaking of rats, are they as sensitive for picking up these newer uh, Omicron subvariants that are circulating as with previous strains? Maybe Anthony, this is one for you. Yeah, the the rats still work fine. I, I want to reassure everyone that the rats still work fine. What we know about rats from even previously is, you know, there'll be examples of people getting sick and then they'll test day one negative and then maybe on day two or three they turn positive. So no test is 100% in that regard. So if you're sick, you should still behave like you're sick. And if you're tested negative once, test again. Right. And if you have any concerns that I'm sick and my, either I think my test is not working or I've got something out, reach out and ask us for advice, either through Healthline, through a clinic, through your normal GP, your normal specialist, and we can give you advice. And that may include going to get a different test, whether it be a PCR or testing for something else. Uh, and so we've also, and Hina's touched on it, also heard about how important it is to be up to date with your vaccinations at this point. Um, what do we know at this stage about New Zealand's kind of timeline for an Omicron bivalent vaccine? Yeah, so the pharmaceutical buying agency, Pharmac, is already in negotiations to look at bivalent vaccines. What I would say, though, is the current vaccine that we have is still really good at educating your immune system, lifting those antibodies, lifting those cells that help you getting really sick. And studies have already shown that if you use the original vaccine or some of these bivalent vaccines, there's not much in it. There really isn't much in it. Mm -hmm. So we have a vaccine, it's effective. If you're due a booster, go and get it. We're watching the bivalent vaccines to say, well, does it last longer? Is it gonna work for other strains? That's really important information. But again, we've got a good vaccine. Like Hina said, get your booster. Easy. Uh, Greg, this is one for you. Uh, is there any general advice for parents of tamariki uh, over, over summer, uh, specific to keeping them safe and well, uh, and particularly ahead of heading back to school? 
would masking come up in conversation then or would it again just sort of depend on how things are looking? Yeah, I don't think the message is particularly different to what we've already been talking about. So um, being aware if, if anybody in your family has symptoms including tamariki uh, and um, and testing them if you think they might be developing symptoms that could be caused by COVID. Uh, Recognising that most of the illness we are seeing at the moment in children is other viruses rather than COVID. But same thing, um, you don't really want to be handing those other viruses around to other children. So if your children are sick, then the right message and all the schools are saying it is keep them off school until they're better. Um, whether you're COVID positive or not, I think that's really sound advice now. Otherwise, you know, summers for enjoying, particularly for children, and I'd be strongly promoting that. Awesome. Um, now that schools are sort of winding down, is there any thinking around whether the summer months could be a bit of a circuit breaker even with uh, people leaving their offices, people leaving schools, heading outdoors more, uh, maybe one for the group, just uh, to get your thoughts on that? I think so. I think the first thing we would say, if the weather's good and we can be outdoors, we start to reduce transmission. You see that. You see that in summer months, both here and internationally. It is a really good time to see transmission come down. Plus, it's a, like Greg said, we need some time off from this. It has been a tiring three years mm. for everyone. And so the summer is a really important time for people to relax, recharge, it's going to be a big year again, um, but yeah, I think I think we will see transmission get less over summer just because we spend more time outside. Yeah, that's typically what we see every year. Um, school holidays, the two-week break, we often see a bit of a dip for the same reasons. Um, summer break, we we see much more of a dip just because people aren't uh, spending, uh, kids in particular aren't spending a lot of time in daycare or school. Uh, I guess the other thing just to pick up on is, um, is other things to protect, thinking about starting back at school next year and mm. we're really conscious about how our routine immunisations have dropped. Mm. Uh, measles in particular, that is predicted by most people doing this sort of modelling that there's going to be a massive measles outbreak. And now COVID is generally a pretty mild disease in children, it's one of the, from a child health point of view is one of the blessings of COVID I suppose. Measles is not that. Mm. Measles can be a really serious illness in children so um, along with uh, Hina's message to make sure you get your COVID and booster and get up to date with that, make sure you get your children up to date with their routine immunisations, particularly the measles one. Um, uh, and whooping cough, another one we're concerned might, uh, we do see epidemics of both from time to time and we typically see them when immunisations rates, rates are low. So thinking of planning towards next year, now's the time to get ahead of it, mm. get your kids up to date with their immunisations. Sure. Uh, what have we seen through uh, COVID or recently with regard to things like measles and, and whooping cough? Are we seeing uh, much incidence of that or is it more a, a fear of what's on the horizon? Yeah, fear, but a pretty well grounded fear. Like this is this is pretty well based in science. Um, I saw a report through in the past week of one of the European countries seeing an uptick in measles cases. As soon as we see that in any one place, such as global global travel, as soon as you see it anywhere, you know it's coming. Mm -hmm. um, and the other viruses as well, even the ones that we can't immunise against at the moment, like RSV, we do see that bobbling up and down when we keep an eye on out across um, globally at some of the other countries that we often are following along quite closely. Um, there's quite a lot of RSV infection out there. So um, yeah, the timing of having a bit of a break and a reduction in some of that transmission is pretty well timed, I think, for us. Okay. Uh, and uh, perhaps another one for you, Greg. Um, Parents of children who are about to turn five, uh, should they be starting to think about COVID-19 vaccination and, and where would you recommend that they seek advice and, and information about this if it is something they're considering? Yeah, so I guess answering in reverse, um, there's really good quality, uh, sound research-based advice freely available. If you look on the, um, the government's COVID website, it's there. If you look at the immunisation centres website, there's heaps of really good quality information. And when families ask me the same question as a paediatrician, I encourage them to make sure they're fully informed. I also strongly recommend it because 
Um, that's my understanding of the science behind it and the protection, not just to the children, but to their loved ones they live with, um, which is part of why we immunise. Um, so, yeah, that's the approach I take. As far as um, children about to turn five, about to become eligible for COVID, I guess timing's everything. If you're about to enter school for the first time um, or return to school having turned five, uh, then you're about to circulate amongst a whole lot of new people. So having that protection, and um, like Anthony's uh, talked about in previous sessions, the children have like a supercharged immune system. A single immunisation is really effective for them. So um, if it was me, I'd be thinking, let's make sure that um, once my child's eligible, get on with immunising soon after. You can book in ahead of time. Sure. Awesome. Um, and I guess finally for the group, um, you've mentioned it's been a big year and, and next year you know, promises to be similarly big, uh, particularly where COVID's concerned. Uh, over the next couple of weeks and months, what's your message for people um, just generally about staying well, COVID and, and uh, all manner of other things? I think, you know, we learnt a lot of lessons from COVID um, and some of them we were aware of beforehand, but it just that COVID managed to bring out in us the common sense of, you know, good behaviour, like if you're sick and unwell, staying away from others, you know, because we don't know what you could be spreading. Um, you know, good hand hygiene has been proven and masks have been proven to help protect you. Um, and I guess the same message about, you know, having those vaccinations early. Mm -hmm. um, have it before you need it um, so that you don't get so sick and unwell. And I'm going to support Greg as well. You know, those childhood homes are really, really important. Um, none of us like to see our little babies, tamariki, sick and unwell, and not a lot you can do if, um, if it was something that we don't have a lot of good treatment for. But we have a very good vaccine that helps pre prevent them from getting sick in the first place. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's really my message is that we learnt a lot. Don't lose those lessons that we've learnt. Carry them forward into the future, regardless of what happens with COVID. These, we've had diseases that come and gone in waves and all those lessons that we've learnt will help protect our whānau and protect our community from spreading those diseases and illnesses. Yeah. Just picking up on that, there's another group um, who should be thinking about this. So uh, Rangatahi, uh, now 16 and over, is uh, now eligible for getting a booster. Mm. Um, I've got one in my household who will be heading off to university next year. So we've debated in the... the he's, um, doubly vaccinated, we've debated about when should he get his booster and we're thinking well let's time it in time for him entering university where he's going to be hanging out with a whole lot of people in close proximity mm. um, because that seems right, he's eligible for it, it's the right thing to do. Uh, and any final words from you around uh, general caretaking and preparations for this holiday period? I think we've covered most of it. I mostly want people to have a good time. Like mm. Anthony said, it's been a tough three years for everybody. And <laughs> let's enjoy safely yeah. the summer ahead. Yeah, relax, recharge, enjoy your summer period. Those are, you know, those are good for your soul. They're good for your health. Mm. Um, we all need it. And just as Hina and Greg have already said, think about getting up to date with your vaccinations. You know, this is a good time where we've got a bit of time to sort of you know, review those things. You know, you're talking about someone going off to uni, you know, things like meningococcal vaccinations, you know. There's recently updated uh, availability of certain types of meningococcal vaccines. And so we've had a real focus in the last three years and people's knowledge around vaccines is a lot higher than I think it's been probably, bef you know, ever before. Mm. Um, and don't wait for the measles cases to hit our shore. Because yes, people will then want to be vaccinated, but actually getting it in beforehand, much more protective and a lot better for you. Oh, well, um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you to those of you who sent through questions. Uh, and a big thank you to our panel for joining us. Take care of yourselves over the Christmas period and have a good one. Kakite.